Hello guys, it's Akwa here and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to compare the Huawei Nova 5T and the Poco F3. In this case, the Redmi K40 is the same as the Poco F3, so I'm going to be calling the Poco F3 throughout the video. Let's start with the specification. The Huawei Nova 5T comes with a high silicon carrying 980, it has an octa core CPU, and has a Mali G76 GPU. And F3, the Redmi in this case, actually comes with a Snapdragon 870 chipset. This is a 7 nanometer chipset. Comes with Android 11 and MIUI 12, 12 gigabytes of RAM and 25 gigabytes of storage. So in this comparison, we're actually going to be concentrating on performance, um, app opening speed, and rendering of video speed. So in this case, we are going to start with the reboot test. In this first part, I'm going to try to reboot both devices and we'll see the one that's going to start up first. The reason why I chose to compare this to Huawei Nova 5T was because I actually kept this device around because of the performance. It was one of the fastest devices I had in the past, way from 2019, so I'm still keeping it because of performance. But if the Poco F3 is great, maybe that's going to replace it. So let's see how this first round goes. Alright, so straight up, it looks like the Poco F3 or the Redmi K40 seems to have beat the Huawei Nova 5T ever so slightly. So now let's start with the, some app opening test. All the devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi. None of them have any app runnings in the background. So these are the applications we are going to start with. The first one is going to be the Play Store. These are going to be some regular apps that we use. And I think it's a tie. I think the Huawei Nova 5T beat it ever so slightly. Let's try with the second application. And with the camera up too, it seems to be a tie. With a Chrome browser, the Huawei Nova 5T seems to have beat the Poco F3. Interesting. And with the WhatsApp application, this seems to be a tie too. Now let's try YouTube. Once again, the Huawei Nova 5T seemed to have beat the Poco F3 ever so slightly. That was so close. Now let's try some PUBG. Alright, so the Poco seems to have the lead now. Alright, so it looks like the Poco F3 or the K40 took this one. So in the next stage, I'm actually going to try some video rendering. I actually shot a video with my USR, my Canon USR. This is a two minutes 4K all eye video. So I'm going to try to export it with KineMaster. We're going to see the one that's actually able to export this video faster. Just in case you're a creator and you edit your videos on your phone and maybe speed is something you'll be considering. So let's compare these two devices in terms of video rendering speed. Let me bring in my timer. We're going to set this to the side. Go one, two, three. All right. So this is going to be interesting. I deep down wish the Nova 5T turns out to be fast, but looks like the Poco F3 has the lead so far. And it's been just about 15 seconds now. And the Poco F3 seems to be like halfway through. And the Huawei Nova 5T seems to be like a quarter. That's that's wild. Whoa, the Poco F3 is speeding fast. That's really nice. That's really interesting. Knowing in 2021, we have such amazing fast speed devices in case you want to do app rendering, video rendering or anything like that on your mobile device. This is going to be awesome. All right, so in 45 seconds, the Poco F3 was able to render the 4K video, the two minutes 4K video in about 45 seconds. Yo, that's interesting. Not even a minute. And the Huawei Nova 5T is like just halfway through. Yo, this is really nice. I think the Snapdragon 870 is a really capable chipset. And obviously this is going to be something most creators are really going to enjoy. Like I said, this was great in my 
full review if you haven't seen it i'm going to link it up here playing games app opening and all that that was really amazing so i'm really glad am i yeah i'm really glad the poco f3 is this fast and the fact that this comes for about 350 dollars which is really great the Huawei Nova 5T is currently going for about 1,700 cities, roughly about $300 here in Ghana. And the Poco F3 is going for about 1,900, roughly if I convert it to $350. So we, as you can see, we're still about 1 minute 40 seconds, 1 minute 50 seconds, and about 1 minute 50 seconds. That's why it took the Huawei Nova 5T to render the same 4K two minutes all live video from the canon eos r so that was it for the speed the poco f3 seems to be the champ in the app opening video rendering and all in all the speed department i'm going to put the geekbench score at the end here so you actually check out so this was obtained from nanoreviews.net and as you can see the snapdragon 870 beats the kirin 980 in almost everything in terms of overall chipset score and in gaming performance cpu performance battery life this is a really capable chipset the snapdragon 870 is something worth purchasing that makes the poco f3 one of the most fastest budget cheapest devices out there so if you're considering buying a device this should be something you should take into consideration now let's actually check out the cameras found on both devices. The Huawei Nova 5T comes with a 48 megapixel main, a 6 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel macro, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Let's also check out what the Poco F3 comes with. This also comes with a 48 megapixel main sensor, which as you know, I wasn't really impressed with it in my full review, but we are going to see what it's like comparing it to the Huawei Nova 5T. So let's just jump into the pictures and see what we... So from the main sensor, as you can see, the Poco F3 seems to produce better pictures with better dynamic range. The Huawei Nova 5T seems to be doing some face smoothing there. The dynamic range doesn't seem to be good. The cloud is all over the place. As you can see from this portrait picture too, the Poco F3 seems to have better pictures, better skin tone showing. You can actually see the black spots on the face, which is really good. I like raw pictures. I don't like the face smoothing going on on the Huawei Nova 5T found on the right so checking out another picture from the main center you can see the colors here on both devices aren't really bad but there's still better dynamic range in the poco f3 which is really good because i didn't really like the picture in my full review maybe because i was coming from the s21 series it made these look a little bit supper but in these pictures you can see most the wide angle cameras on both devices are kind of the same therefore for the colors in this one in particular, I think the Huawei Nova 5T seems to be producing like the blues are more blue. It's not warm like the Poco F3. So this is a video sample found on both devices and straight up you can see this better dynamic range in the Poco F3. The clouds are clearer. It's nicer. It seems to be well lit in all and the stability. Check out the stability is very, very stable compared to the Huawei Nova 5T. Alright, so this is me trying out the cameras on both phones. We have the Huawei Nova 5T and the Redmi K40. Let me know what you think about both cameras. Let's go into the sun and see how it looks. And back to the shade. Let me know what you think about both cameras, the skin tones and... All right, so my mom wants to distract me. And also how I sound in the footage. Let's get interactive in the comment section. Let's go. Okay, so in conclusion, it looks like the Poco F3 or the Redmi K40 is worth your buck. In this case, if you're thinking about buying a budget device, that's going to be really worth it. It looks like the Poco F3 is going to give you value for your money. So in this comparison, the Poco F3 comes out the champ. This is currently one of the fastest, snappiest, 120Hz display, a really cool device for playing games and all. If you want me to see me compare to any other device, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus, or do a full gaming test, stick, stay around, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in my next episode. Go for Poco F3.